<laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Kato Challenge. This is the morning after my first night this year winter camping. And I say winter camping because it's actually early spring camping. Even though it is very much winter conditions. I don't understand how Shook does this when it's below zero Fahrenheit. It's minus six Celsius this morning. And I don't want to get out of this bed. <laughs> it's too cold. So I, I had this idea that I would try breakfast from the tent. Now that the wind's picked up this morning again, I think that's an even better idea. But Chuck, how do you do this, man? Seriously, this is a real challenge. I guess you get your routine, you get used to what you do, I don't know what I don't know, so here I go. Lesson number two of this trip is that yes, you do have to heat up the alcohol or keep it warm. Shug sleeps with his, or it won't light. <laughs> Had a thermos full of water from last night. It's still liquid. There we go. Now another lesson I learned was about layering on the way in here, because I was working so hard. I practically had nothing, just my base layer and a coat, a pair of uh, fleece pants. And that was it. And even then, I was still perspiring more than I wanted to getting in here. But man, once I got here, I had to put on everything I had with me just to stay warm because you're just sitting around. You're not working nearly as hard. And that cold just starts to get at you, just driving at you. Until finally I had to retire to the tent and get inside my sleeping bags to stay warm. Before you start criticizing me in the comments, you coffee connoisseurs, I am drinking instant just because it would be easier. Whew, a lot of pressure under that. Well, it is instant, but it's coffee. I'll take it. Cool. Puppy tracks. <laughs> they weren't there last night. Hey, who came to visit? Didn't want to come anywhere near my camp, apparently. Because the footprints don't come anywhere near my campsite. I wonder what kind of dog it was. I never winter camped. I've pushed it, like, you know, late fall camping, early spring camping, but I've never actually winter camped until this year. This is my first year trying this out. And the reason I decided to try it out is because I, I thought I would just need more gear and I don't want more gear unless I'm really going to enjoy winter camping. Ooh. And I mentioned that to a new friend of mine who said, you just take two sleeping bags. Do you have two sleeping bags? And of course, if you've been a camper for as long as I have, you have a lot of sleeping bags. So I brought two sleeping bags and a wool blanket just in case, you know, backups for your backups and I was able to sleep in my base layer all night without a problem. 
and I was not cold at all. Um, that's a wool skin that I got from Ikea that I use in my chair for winter conditions <clears throat> so I don't feel the cold in my back. Also works fantastic inside your tent underneath you on top of your ground pad. A little extra luxury for me. That was nice. It's a good thing I brought along an extra pair of socks because I seem to be missing a sock somewhere. <laughs> but there's a, another significant reason why I don't winter camp. <clears throat> and this story is I think about 10 years old now. If you don't mind me talking to you while I pack up here. And it's about a guy by the name of Richard Code. He was, according to the news, a follower of Survivor Man, Les Stroud. And he had practiced bushcraft. And you can see the similarities here. And he decided to test out his skills by going on a winter camp with the clothes he had on his back. I think they said he had a knife with him. And that was it. And I won't go into the details of the story. I'll put a link in the description down below. But when the news broke, it was frightening. Absolutely frightening for anybody who practiced bushcraft and liked to go uh, camping and you know trying out survival skills and all the stuff that we do because he died he died that weekend and it was big news in at least the Canadian survival adventure camping community and of course I know I wanted to know the details of what happened to him what did he do wrong and lucky for me the Explorer magazine did an article about his adventure as much as they could piece together from the evidence they found at the scene and there was a few lessons in all of that one of which was make sure you test out your skills with a backup plan I am uh, a two-hour walk from my car across a wilderness lake in the middle of nowhere but there's no way I started out trying to do this. My first attempt at seeing if I could cold weather camp was a cold spring, I think it was March, and it was a sunny beautiful day during the day and then a snowstorm came in at night and the tent that I had at the time had fiberglass poles and the wind picked up furiously. My tent was frozen to the ground by the middle of the night and it was just, I was right by the lake, so no shelter. That was a mistake. And it just pounded on my tent all night long. And it was, it was crazy because the poles would flex and the tent would flatten down on top of me. And then when the wind would let up, it would pop up again. And then the gust of wind would come and it would flatten down. On me. Anyway, it was, uh, I didn't get a lot of sleep that night. But when I got up in the morning and got out of the tent, that was when two of the poles shattered. And what was left was my frozen tent, frozen to the ground, just flapping in the breeze like a flag. So I was literally 10 steps away from <clears throat> a cottage where I could be warm and safe. I didn't need to use it, but it was there in case something like that happened, a backup plan. And I learned a lot from that experience. <clears throat> so baby steps, the next time I, uh, camped out it was I think it was a late fall camping trip it was with Forrest Walker 111 and it was going to drop below freezing and that yeah I have a video about this um, I was testing out the survive outdoor longer escape bivy and sleeping bag anyway the point is um, we're both trying to camp um, where it's going to drop below zero and that particular weekend it worked out for me um, but Forrest Walker 111 found that he was too cold sleeping in his hammock with his um, wool blanket and had to retreat to his truck. So everything I pulled off on this overnight at minus six in the middle of nowhere was built on other trips where I learned a little bit more and a little bit no more and I knew before I got here that I was going to be able to pull this off. But you don't know what you don't know and you have to test this stuff out and that's fine and learn some of this stuff the hard way and that's also fine but make sure that 
if you're definitely out of your comfort zone and your abilities that you have a backup plan so it doesn't cost you your life all right i just i gotta put you guys away because you're you're just in the way at this point and i gotta get this stuff packed up <laughs> i tell you oh this is amazing i was in there just finishing packing up and i heard this ruckus this the sound of running through the woods so i got up and this deer just ran right right through here right right past the back end of my tent i'll, I'll show you the footprints in a second but it was being chased by a wolf which just ran right back up this hill just up here oh my goodness this has got to be the most incredible thing i have ever ever experienced out in the wilderness like right here right here and as i'm a bit of a, a joker because i'm pretty sure that i helped this deer escape i yelled you're welcome oh what an amazing thing to see worth the trip worth it worth the trip <laughs> i can't believe it holy smokes okay we're gonna go and uh show you the tracks the deer took it's it's amazing i found them they're right behind my tent like literally two paces okay there's my tent and there's where the tracks are for the deer. That's how close it was to my tent. Now to see if I can find the wolf tracks or coyote tracks. I'm pretty sure if it's hunting a deer, it's gotta be, gotta be a wolf. But I gotta climb up this hill here because he was coming down the hill towards him when I yelled out. And he turned around and took off. But it's up there up there somewhere ah, I certainly couldn't pull these pull this off without the micro spikes on so once again thank you mark they are fantastic I don't know if you can see those very well but probably. that's where he turned around and started to go back up the hill once he saw my camp and me yelling ah, at least I found them anyway it's real. I didn't dream it. It happened. Oh, it's a wonder they can catch anything in this. Oh, that's exhausting. I wonder how long they were running. <laughs> well, there's two things that amaze me about this trip. I have a lot of respect for nature photographers that managed to capture all of those incredible moments on film for us what they must have to do in order to get that stuff. And I'm very impressed with how Suge is able to film in really, really cold conditions. My hat's off to you, buddy. Well, you're a pretty talented fellow. Now I'm pretty sure it was a video by Winter Trekker that warned about the dangers of walking on spring ice because creeks that empty into the lake will open up the water. And this is an ex exceptional example of that. There's plenty of ice a couple of feet on this lake, but over here where the, I'm getting my water, it's wide open. That would be the end of my trip right there if I fell through in a place like this. So thank you, Winter Trekker, for that advice. Oh, well, all I've got left to do now is put the last bit of gear in my 
park and start heading back. It's about a two hour walk to the car. So I'm gonna get started on that. Maybe uh, finish up my really crappy coffee. But in the meantime, I'm really glad that you guys came along on this trip. Hope you enjoyed it. I did get to share the most incredible experience that I've ever had out in the wilderness. That's why I come out here for the peace, relaxation, a little exercise, and to see the show that Mother Nature puts on. And today was exceptional. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the comments down below. And bye for now.